live long. And I saw that with my grandmothers. I had two grandmothers, one from Jamaica, one from Belize. The one from Jamaica, she always found fault with everyone and everything. And she had a coin or two. So she eat these very special meats and sausages. And she was a lady that didn't live too stressless. It was stressful. She died at 70. The grandmother that slept on the floor and I slept on the floor with her because that's all we had. We didn't have a murder by the bed. So that grandmother lived to see a hundred. And she was a happy woman, Mama here. But she lived different. I never heard my grandmother say that much about someone that was negative. She's always happy. She's always pleasing. And she showed me the value of submitting to that world. So just go back to the original conversation now. Topic, the Mexican. I came back to LA on the 57th day. My erection is, is back, but I'm scared. When sisters would come to me, I would say, hold it, I don't want no sex. Because <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> so, I went back to see him on the 94th day of my fast. I lost 89 pounds. I was very happy. And from then until now. But in the process, I learned a lot of things. And I'm still learning. I'm 83 years of age now. And uh, I thought that at 83, I would be the wisest man on the planet. But I'm the dumbest. And I realized that at 83. So wow, well, when do you really get the package, you know? Mm -hmm. That you say, this is it. I know you don't know anything. And this is why I'm in love with the Pope today. The Pope in Rome? Mm -hmm. Man, I would never believe that I would say these things about a Pope. But that Pope is a very wise man. He said, when he was asked to give the word of the day, he said, I don't know anything. And in reality, what do you know? Nothing. But why you need to know something? What? Maybe a trade, learn to fly a plane, run, manage a ship like I did. But beside that, what do you know? There's nothing to know. Because you're not going to ever know about how the universe was made. You were told that, and you believe that. But do you know? No. Nope. You don't know. We don't know. But so what? As I travel with the new way of life, I begin to see these different shades and rainbows of colors that I didn't like. <laughs> Why? Because it was taking me into a world that I was afraid of. You see, I was a merchant seaman for 10 years. And I'm vulgar, loud, nigga crazy. <laughs> That's me. But I live there. That's me. That's that. <laughs> now, now I'm seeing these other things. You better straighten up, boy. And one day, I walk into this place called Herbs of Mexico and a woman is leaving and she said to me, would you please leave your number? I said, why? She said, you save souls, don't you? You see? 
I don't know what she saw in me, but I didn't feel what she saw. When she said the same soul, don't you? I know that she was emotionally out of balance because I don't believe there's anyone on this planet could identify the soul. I begin to pay heed. Then these sisters in, New, in, in New Los Angeles, I was a steam engineer and I'm experimenting with these herbs. I'm going to herbs to Mexico to buy these herbs. And these sisters started coming around. Abby Lincoln, Marla Gibbs, Sharifu, all these sisters, Uta, Imwalimu, and they were getting these herbs and they were feeling good. And they made me say me. <laughs> and the day that they named, gave me that name in that ceremony, I knew that with that name came a responsibility. A responsibility that I was not prepared to carry out. I mean, I, I knew it. So I had to lay back for five years reprogramming myself such as certain words. You know, semen, we cuss every, every five words certain behavior. Then one day, everything cleared up to me. I wanted to do something good. Now remember now, there's books out there like Jetro Claus, Back to Eden. There's Alma Hutchins, Indian Herbology of North America. There's Ivan Kierkegaard, the Russian. There's Hippolyto Rodriguez, there's Myers, there's Cut Pepper. But they all made the same recommendations for the same disease. No, yeah, but no one is being cured. Somewhere along the way, the science of biochemistry came into my head. Why? Biochemistry. The chemistry of life. And it is in that science that I spent five years that I could see. I could see clear now. I cannot use peppermint. I can't use aloe vera. I can't use Enchinacea. Why? They are hybrids. What do you mean by hybrids? Hybrids mean a product that was made by a laboratory. Wow, I can't believe that I run up on this thing. I'm in Washington and I got a call from Dr. David Ayensu. Dr. David Ayensu is a botanist. He's a member of the Smithsonian Institution. Dr. Sebi, I heard that you have done some research in herbs, with herbs, but have you ever considered using the rosy periwinkle as a cure for leukemia? I said, Dr. Ayensu. Many people have been cured of leukemia without the aid of the periwinkle. Mm. But as for the periwinkle, it is a plant that was hybrided in Madagascar by the French. Mm. Its molecular structure is incomplete. It's an acid-based substance. Mm. What do you mean? I said, I mean just what I said. The periwinkle is a hybrid plant. He made that mistake because he didn't quite understand the science of biochemistry. And 
even Hippocrates, the Greek, 